there is still time for you to prepare your business to thrive in 2023. Heading into a new year and apparently into a recession, I know the headlines are bleak, but there's still a lot that you as a small business owner can do to not only cushion the blow of a recession, but also thrive and grow your business in 2023. Looking at large corporations, their playbook seems to include massive layoffs and cost-cutting measures like dropping products that are no longer working for them or just grounding travel and stopping people from doing other things that tend to cost a lot of money. But for you specifically as a small business owner, while you can learn from what they're doing in large corporations, in this video, I'm sharing seven things that you can do that will have the biggest impact on you thriving as a small business owner. Stay until the end because I think the seventh item I'm sharing here is the most important one of all that people don't tend to talk a lot about when they're planning as a small business owner. If you think this content is going to be helpful, don't forget to hit like on the video and subscribe so you don't miss our next one. All right, let's dive into it. So first on your checklist is going to be to make bold but strategic moves. As a small business, you are nimble. You can test things out much faster than large corporations can. And historically, in times of economic meltdown and recession, that's when we've seen the most innovative businesses show up. Think about Airbnb in 2008, right in the midst of a recession. Think about Microsoft back in the day, companies like Google, Slack, Salesforce. The list goes on and on of companies that have been able to innovate because they were backed into a corner. So it's time for you to dust off that list of ideas that you have been telling yourself you're not good enough, you don't have enough money, you're not ready, and start implementing some of those. Use the lack of resources you're facing right now to create an MVP, a minimum viable product. And what that means is what is the least amount of work you can do in order to deliver a solution to someone who needs it. And from that point onwards, you can build on it. But I would encourage you to move because the big companies right now are being extremely conservative. You as a small business owner can start to take those calculated risks that are sure to pay off if you execute them well and strategically. Next on the checklist is something that anyone who's being smart and conservative with their resources is gonna do, which is to get lean. As business owners, we tend to amass a bunch of apps and tools that we know are helpful and help us to streamline and automate our business. But over time, we might find that we stop using them or we outgrow a specific app. But for some reason, maybe because it's a subscription-based app, it continues to charge us every Every single month, but we're not using it. So I would encourage you to take a look at what all your expenses are and make sure that you can justify the return that cost is going to have on your bottom line. Is it making you money? Is it connected to making you money? If that tool is no longer serving you, cut it off. And I know it might be difficult depending on how many of these subscription services you're paying for to weed through your statement to figure out what they are, which is why I love a tool called Rocket Money. It used to be called True Bill, I believe. And I use it personally, but also this works for business accounts. It helps you identify what the monthly subscriptions are and helps you to either cancel them, renegotiate a lower rate on them, or simply keep them if you do find that you do need them. So think through how you can get lean as a business owner so you can conserve those resources and use them perhaps even for the first thing we talked about, which is your innovation. So next on the other side of the equation, I want you to figure out what is working for you and double down on what's working. Figure out where you're getting the most money, but not only the most money, but the most return on your investment. Where are you finding that you're not really expending a lot of effort, but you're getting a lot of money from it? Perhaps if you devoted more of your resources to that item, that product, that service, it will give you a bigger return. So figure out where your money is coming from and find ways to double down on what is already working for you because it takes less effort to start something from the ground up than to improve something that is already working for you where a few tweaks could potentially get you double digits when it comes to your revenue. So think through that and double down on things that are already working for you. Nobody wants to put in additional work when they don't need to. Before before I tell you what the next one is, let me ask you a question. Do you know how much it costs you to acquire a new customer? 
Put that in the comments. Let me know if you have any idea what your customer acquisition cost. So whatever your customer acquisition cost is, the next item on your checklist is going to be to take care of your existing customers. Did you know that it costs five times more to acquire a new customer than it does to keep an existing customer happy? Whether it's every so often you send existing customers a coupon so that they will buy from you, whether it's you spend a little bit of money to get them a birthday present or a birthday gift in the mail, whatever the case may be, it's cheaper for you to take care of your existing customers than it is to go out and hunt for another one. And here are some other stats that I thought were surprising, but make absolute sense. If you have a subscription-based product or a service where people are paying you on a recurring basis, get this, it could increase your profits between 25 to 95%. So once again, it pays to keep your existing customers happy. The success rate of selling to an existing company is 60 to 70%, whereas the success rate of selling to someone who has absolutely no idea who you are is 5 to 20%. So this is your cue to take a look at your list of existing customers, people who have bought from you before, and approach them again with either a new product or service that they may be interested in. Entice them to take action by giving them a discount so they feel special and they feel like you're thinking specifically of them when you approach them. But the moral of the story is you've already done the work to get the customers that you have. So make sure that you are taking care of them, especially if you're moving into a time of uncertainty. You don't want to have to work harder than necessary. Next on your prep checklist is going to be to diversify your revenue streams. Countless industries have been disrupted over the last three or so years. And anyone who had all their eggs in one basket saw a huge drop in their income. So for example, when Apple gave its iPhone users the ability to turn on their privacy settings, this impacted the ability of people running Facebook ads to appropriately target people. The right ads were no longer following people online. And as you can imagine, for anyone whose bread and butter was to run an ad and make a sale, they no longer were able to do that. And it truly disrupted a lot of businesses. So the moral of the story here is cultivate different ways to make income. So for me personally, in my business, not only am I offering consulting services, I also offer a course. I have brand partnerships, affiliate income, and then also add revenue from the YouTube partner program from you guys watching videos like this one. And I'm also going to be offering retainer services. I'll tell you more about that later. But the point here is if any one of those income streams were to dry up, I wouldn't necessarily be backed into a corner and I could double down on what's working for me. Hopefully that's not what's dried up, but you get the point because I've diversified my income streams. When one thing changes, I'm not necessarily having to scramble to figure out where my next paycheck is coming from. Next up on your checklist is to hone in your content strategy. Whether or not you want to accept it as a small business owner, you need to be a content creator and not just any content creator. You need to create content on an SEO rich platform where customers looking for whatever it is you offer can find you as opposed to you having to chase them down. And that means investing your time in creating content content for platforms like YouTube or blogs are another SEO rich form of content that you could create for your business. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, I do not have the time to learn YouTube and invest the time into a platform like YouTube because it seems like it takes a lot of work. And you're right, there is a little bit of a learning curve with YouTube, but the payoff is great for business owners. So if you're looking to start a YouTube channel in 2023, but feel like you're gonna need some support to get that done, make sure that you're subscribed to my email list because I have something coming out just for you. The link to do that is in my description box. This next one is one of the most important things that you could do to prepare your business for 2023. And that is to reset your environment. Research shows that clutter and disorganization around you spikes cortisol levels in your body, and that severely increases your anxiety, decreases your sleep, and makes it difficult for you to stay on task and be productive. So in order for you to be productive and be able to actually thrive in your business in 2023, you need to make sure that your environment, whether it's your room, your office, your store, whatever it is, 
make sure that it's clean. In certain cultures, people like to deep clean their homes before they go into the new year. Now, we all know as business owners, we're busy and chances are you are not going to deep clean your home. So if you can afford it, hire someone to come and deep clean your home. If you can't afford it, enlist your family and friends as a favor, as a Christmas present, whatever the case may be, to help you get your space together. Because research shows that when you have an environment where you can relax, you can be productive in whatever you are trying to accomplish. So reset your space as you are going into the new year if you want to be productive and thrive in 2023. If you're one of those business owners who's been considering starting a YouTube channel, check out this next video where I share ways that you can launch a channel without necessarily having to show your face if you're one of the people who are camera shy. On your way out, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. We'll see you right back here next time. Bye.